Morning, it's day 11, and here we are in the cook tent. There's Ian, looking marvellous and happy. We're done. Cole came in last night, he fetched the meat out, we've got the rack out, the moose is completely boned out on top of the ridge. We've done it all, we've self-packed, self-guided, beaten ourselves to death and the Alaskan wilderness, but we've done it and it's been a hell of an experience. It's been absolutely fantastic. We're just chilling today, just gonna to get everything packed up, ready to go in the morning, Cole's gonna pull us out. So there we go, we'll speak to you in the morning just before the plane goes, but pretty much lazy day today. Catch you in a bit. And so it's the penultimate day before we finally leave camp and fly into town. So we're planning a little rest and relaxation, which I think we deserve after two pretty epic days up in the mountains. Of course yesterday we were full on packing out the moose and rack, returning pretty late to camp and enjoying a restful night. But my bones are weary and my joints are still aching. I can certainly feel that we put in a monumental effort over the past couple of days. But now it's done and we're just putting our feet up and enjoying this beautiful landscape. In all honesty, we're both a bit emotional that we're leaving tomorrow. It's our last night in paradise, but after this incredible adventure, we're also looking forward to heading home to see our loved ones and share our stories. Steve's already started packing and we believe Cole is planning on collecting us pretty early tomorrow morning at around 8.30 a.m. and we should be back in civilization by mid-afternoon. The scenery here is fantastic. It's just a great place to be, even if you're not hunting. But we're not quite finished yet. I still have the Air Arms S510 TDR and my small game license. I'm going to head out again this afternoon and see if we can bag some time again and have some fresh meat ready for dinner tonight, rather than the diet of sausage and mountain house that's been keeping us alive for the past couple of weeks. These pesky ptarmigan have been getting the better of me all trip, and it doesn't look like that's going to change anytime soon. They love the patches of willow in these sheltered valleys close to the creeks, and I can hear them chattering to one another as I approach. But alas, nothing sits long enough for me to make a clean shot. I take the opportunity to glass for a few moments more to see if I can spot that monster bull we saw a few days ago. I'd like to tip my cap to him one more time before I leave. He was a worthy adversary and I'm confident we'll be reunited in the future. And so it's Mountain House once more, but as usual, there's no complaint from the wild man. So it's day 12 of our epic hunting adventure to Alaska and it's been a pretty epic hunt. It's been absolutely fantastic hasn't it from start to finish with the weather, everything has been really really good. You can't expect this consistent good weather here in Alaska. Last year you know we were rained in four or five days at a time and then once an animal was down it rained again and it kind of sucked the soul out of you but when you finished it was a huge accomplishment. Now here's been slightly different because the weather hasn't really worked in our favour, has it? Well, as we both know, a bit of rain does bring the animals out. They want to move, they want to get dry. This time it's been completely different. It's really cold at night and then really warm in the day. The temperature swing has been quite vast from night to day. So the animals have been coming out in the morning for about half past 10 as soon as the sun cleared the mountain. Then they're feeling, well, I'm a bit too warm with the big heavy coats on. Bump back in the willow. So it's, the willow been, go to sleep. it's been quite hard work that in that respect, hasn't it? Yeah, but in some ways you've got to get the, the measure of both types of weather because we've actually actually been out of hunt all 10 days that we've been here, which is yes. unusual. Normally we're sat in the tent telling jokes and stories and making fun of each other. We've done, done a bit of that, but mainly in the evenings. But I have to say, this has been magnificent scenery. The, the places that Cole has put us to hunt have been fantastic. We've seen animals every day, wherever we've been. Sometimes it's not animals we're hunting. We've seen a lot of grizzly bear at the last place. Three caribou, two of which we took. And here the valley is alive with moose, you know, it's, it's just about everywhere. So yeah. now when we came last year, we were being guided 
Some of the decisions are made for you, but this year, everything we've decided, what equipment we're going to bring, pilot that we're going to use, of course he's chosen the spots for us, as he should do because he knows where the animals are, but we've planned our own stalks, we've got into our own animals, Steve's butchered, I packed out, or we packed out together, and every step of this journey has been our own adventure, which has been quite exciting. Everything from the minute that you get out of bed to the time that you go to bed, it's your decisions where you go, which direction we haunt in, which valley we look at today, it's been a revelation, hasn't it, really? Yeah. And it just goes to show that all of the skills that you know back home from deer hunting in the UK or from the other adventures we've been on around the world, everything's applicable to this sort of environment. You've just got to plan well in advance. Don't take anything for granted. Don't be complacent. Get yourself in shape. Make sure the equipment's right and make sure that you're taking every precaution when you're going out into the wilderness because this is a dangerous place. Not only the conditions can they change, but there are animals out here that bite as well, particularly late in the evenings when you're going out for your ablutions. Don't leave anything to chance. And if you respect Alaska, it will repay you and it has done for us on this trip. Well it has done on two trips I think. It has, yeah. Both trips, especially this one with being us held on our own. It's been changing really, you know. Life changing, so, I'd agree with that. But we've also picked out a few bits of equipment here. Now last time we came up we went through all of the equipment we were going to take with us and that was pretty much the same. You'll, you'll see very similar clothing but there's been a few additions this year that have kind of changed things for us. We're just going to run through those with you to let you know some of the things you might consider if you're planning your own self-guided trip to Alaska. So Steve, what have you got there? First of all, my knives. These are the knives that I work with back at home. So I bought one boning knife, two siding knives, which have been absolutely fantastic for me. They've made my job so much easier as butchering the animals, skinning it, preparing it. The next big thing has been frame pack from Barney Sports Shelling, Frontier Gear of Alaska. Last year I had a mystery ranch pack. Well, we both did. Really good packs for what we did. But when we've been packing out the weight we've been packing out, these have been brilliant. They fit them for you. In the sports chalet there, the guy who takes your measurements and he makes sure it fits properly around your hips and your shoulders. And the bag comes off, as you'll have seen in the films. So you can strap the meat to the frame so you're not carrying the extra weight of the bag. And it's just more secure and solidly robust for when you're walking those miles with that head heavy, heavy weight. It has made a big difference to me especially. And the third thing is Disco Cube. This has been a lifesaver. When we've been in the tent at night and Ian has been telling the same stories with different twists, as long as we go, we can put some music on and just sit there and Drown chill out. out. Noise. And it's been absolutely brilliant. The pack I totally agree with. You know, I've taken my pack off and I've used it to get racks out. So it gives you the best of both worlds. The carrying capacity of the pack itself to take all your gear in there. But also when you kill an animal, you're bringing out meat on the bone. Having that pack to be able to tie things to is great. Steve, obviously you work your magic with your knives anyways. I probably wouldn't bring such a sophisticated selection of knives. But they allowed you to work so quickly on the beast that I could just keep packing. So for me, it was really useful to be able to get up the mountain, put another load back on and get straight back down again. And yeah, I totally agree. That disco cube, it just lifts the atmosphere, it particularly does. when you've it had does. a tough day, a bit of music going on in the background. And so I'd agree with all the Steves. Now, for me, it's been a little bit different. So I've done all the cooking here. We invested in this Jetboil Genesis base camp system, which has got a pot and a frying pan, dual burner. And rather than just eating Mountain House, we're using one of those Coleman stoves, which is quite heavy. This has been amazing. We've only used just towards the end of the two gas bottles since we've been here, which is coming on for two weeks. Now, last year with the old Coleman stove that Tony was using, I think we got through something like 12 gas bottles, I which was- horrendous, wasn't it? Yeah, so it's really to... efficient. It boils really quickly. Just kept mixing things up, which was pretty good. So and this also folds in one compact carrying case. So highly recommend that from Jetboil. It also means you can take substantially less gas, which is also quite a lot of weight. Which we'll know for next time. It's so of course, in addition to the Jetboil Simo, we've only used one and a half tins of gas on that too. So very, very efficient stuff. The second is this Hawk Endurance ED 20 to 60 by 85 spotting scope. Without this, I don't think we'd have been able to plan for any of our stalks. This has got such a pin sharp sight picture. We've got some great footage through the digiscoping adapter. It really has been a game changer for me in terms of us being able to see the landscape, being able to pick out the animals. Do they have two brow tines, three brow tines? Looking at changes in body size and type, particularly the two big bull that we saw across in the valley there. Also looking into valleys and seeing the difference between this ridge and that ridge. So you can see how deep the valley is beyond. You can plan your stalk. And this Vanguard's lightweight tripod, once again, really stable and it perfectly complements that hawk spotting scope. So this has been a game changer for me and you've seen me over the course of the two weeks looking through that quite a lot. And then this. Garmin InReach Explorer. Now, this is our basically our safety device. It's a satellite communication device, but more than that, it allows you to plot points on the map so you can track your journey. So when you've been out stalking, it shows you exactly where you've gone. It tracks waypoints every two minutes so people back home can see where you are on the mountain. It's allowed us to plot camp observation points where we've taken animals, and then we can track our way back following our path. And of course, as you've seen, we have tagged with little colored tape the trails as we've gone out. Also, it's, it's very handy having this so that you know exactly where the animals are, 
particularly in the dark, if you want to get back to camp and you can't see a long way, a very useful bit of kit. And it's allowed me to stay in touch at home, so I've been able to send a couple of text messages every day, let my wife know where I am, and then just stay in touch. So the weather forecast on this has also been absolutely spot on. Refresh it every day, it gives you every two to three hours a new weather forecast, and it's been pretty much accurate. If you're looking for some form of communication where you're out in the wilderness, Garmin InReach, I can highly recommend that. And last but not least, I have to say a big shout out to this, which is my Sal 404 Synchro XTC, this is the carbon stock version, and the Hawk Endurance 6 24 by 50 scope. Now this combination has been amazing. I like the long range center fire reticle that allows you four different aim points. You just need to tweak it on the magnification to make sure it suits your ammunition. It's been lightweight, it's been compact, it's been dropped a few times. Steve actually used my rifle to break his fall when we were coming down packing out the other day and it still shoots straight. When you are packing a heavy load of meat, you've got to take your rifle to protect yourself from grizzly bears. It only weighs in about six pounds in total, so it's the perfect mountain hunting rifle combined with a long range hunting scope that's got really good crisp optics. We've got lots of equipment here, but the most important thing, mate, has been your company. It really has been a pleasure hunting with you. And you yet again. We make a great team. I know you can come on your own, but it's great to share it with somebody. It's a sense of shared achievement. Things get tough and things get tired, and I've had times this week where I found it rough. Steve picks me up and vice versa. And this is an opportunity that you have to share with somebody to really, truly pass on just how magnificent it is. So I can highly recommend to anybody who's looking at planning your own hunt. If you are from outside America, you'll need to register with a guide. But once again, thanks ever so much, Steve. Cheers, Ian. It's been amazing spending the week with yeah, you. It's been good fun. Do take the opportunity to get yourself up here and experience some of Alaska's wilderness hunting at its very best. Coal arrives on time and we start packing our little kingdom into the plane. It's imperative that we recognise the importance of choosing the right bush pilot. No matter how good a hunter you are, if you drop too far from the game or in areas that make it impossible to reach your quarry, you won't be successful. Cole spends months scouting for the very best hunting areas to ensure his clients have the very best chance of success. And it's with a heavy heart that we leave this magnificent place for another year. Whilst it might sound a little melodramatic, this extraordinary landscape has provided what can only be described as life-changing experiences for two ordinary boys from Derbyshire. In a little over 12 months, We've harvested no fewer than 10 big game animals, including four caribou, two black bear, two grizzly bear, and two spectacular trophy bull moose. It's an achievement that few will ever match, if at all. As we finally approach civilization, I take a few moments to close my eyes and remember some of the highlights of our adventure and the special moments that made this our greatest ever hunt. And he said, while he's already offered, I said, what? Said, what? <laughs> he said, to rub your feet. I says, <laughs> I says, do you know how I know that's a lie? <laughs> and he said, because it's wildy. <laughs> we got another one here. Oh no, it's just a dirty mark. It's okay. I'll switch it out. Have a wash, mate. Have a wash. Onward guys, onward. That seemed like that could have gone wrong. I thought about it twice and I thought, gotta go. How's my hair looking? Beautiful. I struggled a bit this morning. Hard work. Those drugs kicking in mate. Have you ever tried talking to you? Well, you don't talk to me, you talk at me and over me. There is a difference. Is that fair? <laughs> Binoculars. You little rotters. Not filming, are you? No. <laughs> oh, no. So give us a clap. <laughs> and whenever you're ready. On the optics, which help for it, have increased light reflect. <clears throat> but it does have dielectric coating. When you're it's ready? Chubbed up. So it's been a pretty busy day. Um, Wildy and uh, Blades here have been busy on the knives. So, uh, so well done, James. Congratulations on spotting your first moose. And uh, we're going to bring you more often, I think. Maybe. Perhaps. Okay, give us a clap. <laughs> and away you go. 
Do you see how fast that was? No, I'm Are you sure that wasn't a mosquito? Anticip <laughs> anticipation now, mate. Uh, Okay then, sausage fest. Cheese head. Afro cheese. <laughs> Well, go, I go. think we go down there because I don't think it's as far as you think it is. Right. And I think when we get onto that knoll over there, we're going to be halfway to it. Really? Yeah. I'm sick of all these moose, Wildy. I'm sick of it. Uh, I love moose hunting. I love moose hunting. Put it in a bag, Mark, if you got a, like a Ziploc or something. Put it down your trousers. Put it down your trousers. There you go, you got it. There so you were. <laughs> no bother. He said, yeah, he said, you can go straight to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I fit in Steve and James fits in me, so it's not like a, a tri-way spoon. It's nice. You should try it, you know, if you're kind of like bored. I hope you enjoyed our adventure as much as we enjoyed sharing it with you. But don't worry, this is not the end, for we'll be back again soon. And one of you may be joining us. Oh, we're again. Oh, look! <laughs> <laughs>